Nate the Cox, thanks for joining us on You Better Believe That's Butter. It's been quite a while since I've been able to say that. So here's a fresh new year. Uh, we're gonna be shooting out some videos. And uh, what better way to start than with breakfast burritos, okay? They're, they're delicious, they're nutritious, they're filling. Uh, they're good for almost any season. Uh, they're good for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or second lunch, or second dinner. Okay, right? <laughs> I mean, they really are. Um, they're good for meal prepping. You can, you can make just a couple of them you know, to have for the week, or you can make like 20 or 30 of them, set them aside, put some in the freezer. Uh, I'm gonna make a huge batch here and bring them down to a bunch of nurses and stuff. Um, and they're gonna, eat the, they're gonna eat the tar out of them. They're gonna really appreciate it, but I'm, I'm probably gonna be taking like, like 16 or more out of this batch, giving it to them, okay? So, without further ado, let's get to work. You better believe that's butter. Okay, here we are out at the griddle. All right, I got this nice tree canopy thing here. I just trimmed that up. So, uh, well, I can still grab it, but it's not hitting me in the face. So that's good. For those of you who don't know what this is, this is a Blackstone griddle. For those of you who have only heard about it and thought about using it, oh my goodness, just jump in, okay? This is the 36 inch one, the four burners. So you need to have all your food prepped before you get going because it cooks food pretty fast and you can lay it all out here. All right, we're gonna start with the taters. I already got these diced up here. I used a chopper to help out because I have so many. These are four and a half baking potatoes right here. You'll see real quick why I use two of these turners. And I will have Amazon links in the description down below for everything you see here. Everything from the Blackstone griddle to these turners, which I find are the best turners that I've uh, ever used on a griddle. They're very stiff, great for smash burgers, great for uh, tossing hibachi, great for tossing breakfast stuff. <laughs> yeah, great for tossing. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna be making like, like 28 like burritos and stuff like that. So that's why I have four and a half bacon potatoes worth of hash browns here. And, uh, but we want them crisp. We want the texture for them you don't want a soggy burrito. So there's a couple tricks on keeping these crispy so that you can really get that texture along with the flavor. And, and part of it is when you're cooking them, lay them out and, and try not to mess with them too much. Let them brown on the side before you flip them. Is there a certain order that you always go with when making these burritos? Okay. So Maddie wants to know the order of this. Um, well, I just try to focus on what cooks the slowest. Uh, potatoes take the longest to cook, so I don't even start with that. When well, they start really going, I'm gonna push them to the side and start working on some uh, either veggies or meat beside them. Okay, so some of you are wondering like, why am I putting butter across this, right? Because uh, you're only like stick the stick of butter on there, you better believe that's butter. Okay, so these, a lot of these uh, burritos are going to some nurses, uh, nurse instructors, and, and one of our good friends, nurse instructor, she's a vegan, and uh, even though I don't normally make vegan food, I uh, do my best to accommodate that. Um, I hope I don't mess it up, but that's why we're just sticking with oil here. And then I'll make all the veggies together. Uh, this time, I definitely won't, you know, I won't put the meat with the veggies side by side while I'm cooking it uh, this time. And then, uh, and then I'll bring the meat in afterwards. So that's the order we're doing it today. And most of the seasoning is gonna be pretty basic, salt and pepper and some slap your mama. Slap your mama. Okay, this stuff's actually really good. It's, it's pretty simple. It's mostly just uh, here it is, ingredients, salt, red pepper, black pepper, and garlic. Uh, very simple, but the uh, proportions are really nice. It gives a, a good Cajun uh, taste without going really, really strong. Um, but but it, is, it is decently strong seasoning, so don't go overboard or you're gonna be regretting it. Or maybe you won't, maybe you like a lot of seasoning. But I'm just saying, like, be careful. You can always add more later. Can't take it away. Uh, kind of like tiny french fries. I know I'm making you hungry, Maddie. Yep. You love the hash browns. Yes. 
sunlight is the perfect type of lighting. It it's is. It's gonna isn't look it? amazing. There's a mosquito flying around me. Okay, so I've got the onions and the bell peppers and the garlic all uh, pre-sliced up, diced up, ready to go here. And I got some mushrooms, which I didn't have in time to, uh, when I was prepping everything, so I just got the pre-sliced. We're gonna add those in a little bit because they cook really fast. I want to get the garlic on top there a little bit at first because that can cook too fast as well. So I got the garlic scooped up. And then I'm going to take the uh, just salt and pepper for the veggies. I don't want to overpower everything with the Cajun. And that's sunflower oil I'm using there. Sunflower oil actually has a higher burn temp than vegetable oil, so I find it works a little bit better on the griddle to help keep it from burning and stinking everything up. How do you even get sunflower oil? They don't really seem greasy. I don't know. The sunflower seeds don't seem greasy, but I guess, I mean, I guess that's why it's more expensive. I guess I crush them and the, I don't know, maybe it's part of a different, maybe it's a different part of the plant. Maybe it's part in the stem instead of on the seed. I, I really don't know. We got Lucy circling us here, looking for me to drop every, any single morsel here, and she will find it. Even the smallest tiny morsel. See, it's going right through the grass and everything. Now, some of you might be wondering what temperature I have this on. Um, it's kind of a low medium, uh, you know, close, closer to medium than low. But uh, yeah, this thing cooks really, really hot, especially once it gets really warmed up. But you gotta watch it because it'll cook too fast really easy. Even if you have this thing completely filled with food, watch that temperature. Keep adjusting it as you need to go. Okay, so here's trick number two on keeping these taters crispy is we're gonna put these things together, but if you put them together, if you hump all, all of them together where they're hot, or if you put the burritos together too soon before they cool off, then they get soggy. So you definitely wanna lay them out as flat as possible when you bring them off until they cool down. I'm guessing this is a white level. No, it's not. It's leveled. It's, it's, it's set to slope so it can drain. You need to level these so they're not perfectly level. You want them to be able to drain as you cook. All right, so I cut the bacon in half strips because I find that that just sometimes works a little easier. And uh, in the sausage, I kind of broke up my hand a little bit so it wasn't just a tube. Everybody watching this part can start drooling. Yep. If you're not hungry yet, there's something wrong with you. Between all those potatoes and veggies and all this now. Okay, well, Maddie's bringing me the meat tray. I'm bringing the sausage off. I broke down really small, crumbled really nice. The bacon still has just a little bit to go to crisp up. So I'm gonna put the eggs in with the bacon, uh, which is crazy, because I got 24 eggs. What's your preference on bacon? Do you like it raw? Do you like it burnt? Do you like it crispy? <laughs> oh, I definitely don't want it raw. Oh, that's kind of, that's gross. I like it like just barely crispy, because uh, I don't want it dried out. 
and at that fine line it's really hard to grab okay that looks pretty good all right can you bring me the eggs there there kiddo please and thank you Scraper went down. Scraper down. All right. I need to get this bacon cooked just a little bit more. We got so much bacon grease over here. Perfect for cooking the eggs on. All right. Actually, I'm gonna let you pour it. Have you guys ever seen what 24 eggs look like when they hit a griddle? It's kind of crazy. Two dozen. Okay, and it's so many in there, you have to use like a little hand blender or an emulsifier, fire, emulsifier, that thingy. <laughs> the thing you hold, the little hand blenders. All right, pour me in here. 24 eggs. Faster. Oop, slower. Oh, <laughs> oh I lost an egg down the drain. I lost some eggs to the bacon. Maybe I should take the bacon off. Or kept it on that side. <laughs> All right. Let's take some of this bacon out. Uh. All right. Well, it's all going to get mixed together anyways. Should have known better. It's been a while since I put 24 eggs on this. What's your highest egg count on this? I think 24. 24. Maybe I've done 30. Actually, I think I did like 28 or 30 once. But look, look at how you can just flip that over. Yep. Yeah. I didn't season the eggs a whole lot. When I, actually, I don't think I seasoned them at all. I knew that they would collect a lot of seasoning off the griddle here. Make sure the eggs are cooked on the bacon because the bacon's just going to get broken up in little pieces anyways that's looking really pretty just black pepper and salt on on the eggs. Oh, a little raw in the middle. Plenty of flavor here though, that's not a problem. You want flavor, this burrito is gonna have it, so. <laughs> is there a way to save it if you do put too much seasoning on something? Um, try to water it down. Add more of that ingredient without the seasoning. Um, that's really about all you can do. You know. If you accidentally pour a whole bunch in one spot, just take that spot, scoop it out, and throw it away. I think that's about your two options. All right, we're gonna scoop this off, take it up, and we're gonna start putting them together here as soon as it cools down to room temperature. All right, here we go. You see all this food spread out? Now, I already grated the cheese here, and some of you are like, did you really take time to grate this cheese? Yes, you'll see this footage right here. Do you see how pretty that looks? Now, that should also make you hungry. That should make you delicious feeling right there. I do that because the pre-grated cheese has powdered lard or cellulose on it to keep it from sticking and it ruins, I think it ruins the flavor. Plus, I don't want to eat that. I don't, I don't. So, you just got a whole bunch of flour tortillas, okay, burrito size. And uh, I got some plastic wrap here. So that's the only additional items we brought in so far. So I'm gonna start off, uh, let's see here, our, our vegan one, if I got this right, so, now you don't want to put so much food here you can't roll it. So we're just going to take some taters. Which these are delicious. Maddie, you had a couple of these. Yes. All right, the seasoning came out really good. All right, some shroomage. Shroomage is always good. Some veggies, peppers and onions. 
Okay, you better have some paper towels with you because you're gonna make a mess. I think that's complete, all right? So, so that you guys can see it, we'll start there, tuck it in. These uh, tortillas, we keep them in the fridge when we store them, but I've, I kept them out when I started prepping this morning so they could warm up to room temperature so that they're, they're flexible. You don't want them cold or they'll break. And there we go. Now, all right, our plastic wrap, because we're gonna store these, I'm gonna, I mean, I'm definitely not, well, we're gonna eat one right now. We're definitely gonna try one here in a second. All right, so we're wrapping this up for later. Make a big stack. Now, our more regular ones here are full on. So let's start with some egg. And if you wanna add a little salsa in it, I like to dip mine in salsa if I'm feeling like it, if I feel like it's dry. I don't really like to add it inside. That's just my personal preference. I also don't like it overly done with sausage. That's why I could have done two sausage rolls, I only did one. I like mixing the bacon in. Okay, taters, taters, taters. I want the taters to really, and I, I, I stuff these. I know I said don't overstuff them, but um, yeah, you're talking to the wrong guy. All right, now that, and then cheese. This is extra, uh, I'm not sure if this is extra sharp. It's, it's definitely sharp cheddar. I can't remember if it was extra sharp or not. Okay. Let's see here. There we go, barely wrapping this one up. Now you want half of this? No, good. You're good? All right, let's try this. Mm. Mm. That's good. You get all the texture differences. I can still feel the, the texture of the crunchy from the taters. The bacon is just crisp enough where that's got the texture and then the, the veggies are just, just on the edge of being caramelized. Mm, sorry. So they're not like mush, but they, they just started to caramelize so that flavor is there, but they still have a little bit of crisp to them. So all those different textures along with the flavor is gonna what make this an amazing meal. And the reason I have them all laid out so flat like this, like I said before with the taters, is you wanna let all the heat out of them, okay? They're room temperature now, so this could be a little bit warmer. Uh, but the room temperature now, so they're not steaming anymore, that's what's gonna make them soggy, because if you wrap them up hot, um, th they're gonna just be a soggy mess when you go to reheat them. But you can, you can freeze these, put them in the fridge. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, really, really excited about getting this channel going again. Uh, please just subscribe, hit that bell for notifications, and check back with us. You guys have a great one.